so my name is Alexander Krzyżanowski and uh, let me start uh, from wh what this presentation is about. Uh, the first thing is that we develop um, TMPSFW, which is a hybrid of HTTP accelerator and um, firewall. It's embedded into the Linux uh, HTTP IP uh, stack, so it works in different interrupt uh, contexts. And the main uh, purpose of the project is to uh, process uh, um, large um, traffic and uh, protect against um, volumetric DDoS attacks. So it means that we need to process a lot of uh, HP requests and uh, also since uh, the uh, project works in, in uh, Linux TCP IP stack, uh, we uh, have a near real-time requirements to all data structures uh, used in the project. Uh, this, uh, since it's um, HTTP accelerator, it means that it um, catches uh, web content and the, uh, core the, of the core data structures of the project is uh, web cache, which is uh, typically uh, data structure indexed by uh, URL and uh, host, so this uh, large uh, string uh, key and some data, usually uh, quite uh, large data like uh, modern uh, images, uh, web pages or whatever. Uh, from the other side, we had um, a couple of um, requests from our clients about uh, investigation of uh, performance issues with their uh, current um, data structure. The first request was from MariaDB, it's expressed in uh, MariaDB 2630 uh, development issue, and the problem was about uh, split order at least uh, and the significant performance degradation. We'll uh, talk about this data structure later on the presentation. The second request was uh, from uh, Pos uh, one of the Pos PostgreSQL uh, developers uh, about uh, their internal uh, data structures uh, used for uh, transaction handling, not uh, the main uh, database index data structure, but uh, helping uh, data structures to handle uh, transaction descriptors. Um, we also concerned about uh, tail latency. Uh, recently we had uh, another request from uh, our client about the huge uh, tail latency in the CDN and the thing about tail latency is that it's always about big uh, numbers and very busy machines. Uh, for example, if we consider a very large uh, CDN uh, having a lot of uh, CDN nodes and uh, hosting a lot of uh, web resources and uh, processing requests from a lot of clients. Uh, the first thing is that uh, you might uh, think that, for example, if you uh, hit uh, only one slow request or from 10,000 requests, it's not a big deal. However, However, if you uh, scale, uh, then uh, uh, a lot of users may uh, have uh, see a very, very bad, uh, bad uh, web resource. For example, you imagine that your uh, header um, header image on your on your website header uh, just cannot be loaded. So this is a big issue for any web uh, website owner. Uh, the second thing about uh, tail latency is that it's always uh, happen on a busy machine. Uh, for example, if you do uh, make a benchmark of your program and uh, some of the tasks require sub-second uh, delays, for example, several microseconds. Uh, then if you go, uh, then when you go to uh, production and you experience significant loads, then uh, your uh, operating system uh, goes under stress and the uh, CPU schedule uh, can uh, provide up to one second uh, scheduling delay. Uh, this is what we uh, uh, observed on, um, in, in the blog post, uh, is that uh, Linux operating system schedule uh, pro provided one second uh, delay uh, to schedule one process to another. So if you, uh, if your, uh, if your main process uh, re uh, requires some relatively long uh, time-wise uh, to finish 
uh, some operation, for example, rehashing of your main uh, hash table. It can be scheduled several times, and each time it can uh, wait for up to one second uh, in a run queue. So we can get a huge uh, tail latency. Um, so in, uh, in our case, uh, we work with uh, uh, data structure as a database. So as I mentioned before, uh, Tempesta uh, FW uh, catches um, uh, uh, catches uh, web content in um, uh, in a uh, data structure. Uh, so we have uh, s several uh, several um, several contexts for our uh, data structure. Uh, so the the most uh, performance crucial. Uh, paths is uh, lookups and inserts. So uh, since it's about web cache, so we usually ha uh, expect more lookups than inserts. Uh, deletions uh, happen, but quite rarely, usually on data evictions. Uh, so uh, deletions can be relatively uh, slow. Uh, so, um, uh, we we need uh, s uh, to uh, say uh, several words about log free and uh, weight free uh, systems. Uh, typically, uh, we build uh, log free uh, data structures. They are uh, more uh, straightforward. And uh, basically, difference between log free and weight free is that uh, in log free. Any given um, CPU or thread can starve for for some time, but the whole system makes progress. In wait free, uh, wait free is a more uh, strict requirement, which uh, guarantees uh, system wide uh, throughput that uh, all the uh, threads uh, do uh, progress. Uh, this uh, live locking uh, prog problem uh, can happen in uh, work free. Uh, systems when, uh, for example, several threads uh, constantly uh, pulls uh, resources and cannot uh, make any progress. So, uh, in uh, log-free design, we uh, have to uh, keep in mind um, live logging. Uh, in all the uh, data structures which we uh, explore today, uh, deletion is um, uh, it's a re real problem. Uh, the main uh, thing about deletions uh, is um, memory reclamation. Uh, from one of the sides, deletion is uh, quite uh, similar to insertion. So we just um, may make some changes to internal uh, index nodes in, in the data structures and uh, Typically, we can use the same techniques as we use for insertion. Uh, however, the biggest problem is that uh, at some point of time, uh, the uh, index data node or uh, reference set uh, data node uh, can, can be freed by the system. And we have to make sure that uh, there are no observers uh, currently working with the uh, data or index node. And this makes uh, the data structure uh, structures uh, removal very sophisticated. Uh, the second thing is about uh, memory fragmentation. This is most about uh, memory allocators. And uh, basically, uh, when we talk about very fast and very scalable data structures, uh, we uh, need to talk about uh, memory allocators. So we don't need very fast and very scalable insert in a tree or hash table itself if we have very slow uh, memory allocator. So typically when we uh, develop um, very fast and scalable log-free data structures, we have to work on scalable and very fast uh, memory allocator. And uh, once we develop uh, efficient and scalable memory allocator, we have to uh, take care of memory fragmentation and what to do with uh, freed uh, memory chunks. Uh, there are several uh, techniques uh, available for uh, 
uh, data removal in from uh, arbitrary uh, data structures, for example, hazard pointers or read copy updates. And uh, one of the uh, one of the popular uh, way to um, to cope with uh, debt removals is uh, dummy nodes uh, used in split order at least uh, several uh, QMA implementations and uh, so on. Uh, our current um, uh, data structures which we will um, consider in this talk is used in uh, Tempesta DB, which is a part of uh, Tempest FW. As I mentioned before, this uh, uh, kernel space, so near real-time uh, requirements, and uh, we develop it uh, in that way, it can be accessed from many CPUs, including a uh, large NUMA system. Uh, also, this uh, in-memory database, so uh, the web cache is uh, in-memory, it's uh, hosted mostly in uh, the RAM. However, uh, the web cache must be persistent. We uh, do need to uh, write all the collected data to disk on shutdown and warm up the cache on uh, system start. So we uh, one of the this re particular requirements uh, make makes us stuck with uh, uh, data of sets in a flat uh, address space instead of uh, raw C or C plus plus pointers. Uh, so the persistence is, uh, at the moment works as a simple write or a mapped um, areas. Uh, one more thing about uh, web content is that uh, it requires uh, duplicate uh, key entries. For example, if, when you uh, when your cache uh, must uh, contain a current copy of the data along with a stale response. And also, if you uh, use a hash table, uh, collisions are possible. Uh, one uh, thing about the um, database is that uh, it must support uh, multiple indexes. For example, we have the main index for URL uh, by um, URL key, and also we may need um, a designated index for very. So this is like a primary and secondary indexes for real databases. Uh, so, a uh, few words about the stored data. Uh, the, the most crucial uh, case is uh, surely web cache, so this is about the long uh, string uh, keys, URLs. Uh, URLs are some kind of um, uh, problematic uh, keys because uh, most of the URLs have a uh, common prefix. Uh, also, it uh, they have um, very long um, long strings, and if we use um, plain Patricia uh, tree, then we have a lot of uh, collisions in the intermediary nodes. If we use uh, hash uh, table, then uh, collisions might uh, happen. Uh, besides the web cache, we also target uh, the uh, data structure to store uh, small um, records like uh, client accounts, uh, session cookies, and so on. The main uh, thing about the different um, data uh, records is that from from the uh, first um, from from the one hand, we have a large. Um, uh, data stored in the database, the large data uh, is uh, have very different uh, lengths. For example, uh, some of your images can be very small, some of them can be up to several kilobytes. Uh, from the other side, uh, the other records like a client account, session cookies, filter rules, and so on, uh, actually uh, just uh, uh, fixed size records and typically small records. So we we'll, uh, consider mostly uh, uh, these two different types of records. Um, so uh, let's um, compare the trees and uh, hash tables uh, for these uh, types of 
uh, work words. Uh, try uh, this uh, Patricia tree or Radix tree, that's the same name, uh, provides uh, ordering. So we uh, can make um, range uh, queries on the uh, tree, for example, to traverse from one URL in lexographical order to another. Uh, with uh, hash tables, we don't have any ordering, so in C++ we have them as unordered uh, maps. So we have no orders. Um, so uh, hash, ta hash tables uh, provide very fast um, queries for when you need to uh, look up or insert a particular uh, key. Uh, key. H but they uh, typically, is, uh, well, uh, trees and hash tables both need uh, some reorganizing, uh, like uh, rebalancing for binary trees or busting for our uh, hash tree, or hash tables need uh, rehashing as they grow. Or from the other side, uh, the collision chains can grow indefinitely. Um, a few words about uh, memory allocation. I mean, mean the um, uh, I, I mentioned uh, this um, topic um, a bit earlier, uh, but now I want to reference a very good uh, talk from CPCon uh, 19, uh, 20, uh, 20, 2019 uh, about uh, compression of the pointers. We use very similar techniques uh, uh, how to compress uh, pointers to a smaller offsets. And uh, also about um, a specific um, allocation uh, allocation tasks. The first one is that we need to care about special locality. So if we consider index data structure, for example, uh, some uh, tree and the data itself, uh, when we, you start to issue the query, you first, first you need to uh, run over your index, traverse through the, the nodes. And uh, after, only after that, when you fully resolve your index, you go to the data. So uh, with this mean, all the index nodes, and preferably in this sequence as you traverse them, uh, should reside as uh, in smaller piece of memory as possible, on uh, near pages or in a single page. From the other side, uh, the data box uh, can uh, reside in completely different memory locality. Uh, so in this, um, uh, in this sense, uh, uh, generic memory locators uh, don't um, don't provide you uh, good uh, special locality. Since you once you insert a new item, you uh, allocate several index blocks. After that, you uh, place uh, some um, data, uh, and after that, you place again uh, some index blocks. So uh, data blocks and index, index nodes are intermixed in the memory. So uh, generic uh, memory locator do not provide a good special uh, locality. In our case, uh, for our H3, we um, uh, split um, our flat and mapped um, memory area into extents by two megabytes of size, uh, which is equal to one uh, huge uh, system huge uh, page. And one of the extents, one of the huge page is used solely for index nodes, and uh, another a uh, huge page uh, is used for data nodes, and we, we can uh, intermix the uh, pages. So if uh, one of the page uh, was allocated for index nodes, it's, it's used only for index nodes uh, solely. Um, so, uh, let's uh, have a look on uh, binary tree. For example, if we consider uh, to use um, STDM map as a read black uh, binary tree in our program. Uh, typically, it's uh, possible in these uh, protocols uh, to provide uh, binary tree uh, uh, log free uh, access and uh, insertion. Uh, however, that's not uh, trivial. And uh, basically, it's uh, very hard to implement binary uh, tree, balanced binary tree in a log free uh, manner. Uh, if we use uh, uh, 
uh, with the binary tree in our programs, typically if we use uh, CDMap, map, then we're bound to use um, huge uh, log, while uh, in uh, best cases uh, read-write log. For example, we in our benchmark we used read-write uh, spin log, which is uh, unfortunately there's no uh, read-write spin logs in um, current standard, but we ported it in our benchmark from the Linux kernel. Uh, and if we compare uh, them with a simple hash table uh, written by Hans, we uh, actually we ported this particular hash table from the Postgres uh, SQL and uh, hash table with uh, plain uh, mutexes per bucket provides significant better performance on 75% um, lookups and 25% uh, inserts. Uh, so uh, binary trees uh, protected with a global work uh, are completely not uh, scalable. Uh, hash tables uh, in uh, this sense are more uh, scalable, they can, can be implemented with uh, fine general works. It's not so easy to do with uh, standard um, STD unordered map, and typically you need to implement them uh, by hands. Uh, however, uh, hash tables require uh, rehashing, and rehashing typically require um, global uh, log and uh, take some time because uh, data uh, copying countries the control box uh, is uh, required. So this is a good great impact into tail latency. In uh, our case we didn't want to uh, of course, we, we need to do some uh, data structure reorganization and uh, something quite rehashing, but we try to make it as small as possible and not uh, global. So we do, basically we do rehashing with a small uh, pieces of data. Uh, one of the interesting implementation is uh, split audit uh, list. Uh, uh, they are relatively widespread. For example, you can uh, find them in the wild in uh, Intel thread building box as a concurrent unordered map. It's blazingly fast implementation. And also you can find them in MariaDB uh, transaction, uh, transaction descriptors uh, hash table. However, in MariaDB there was an uh, uh, issue uh, uh, still open is that uh, when you populate a lot of um, data into the split ordered uh, list, uh, by the way, split ordered list is, uh, um, is a representation of uh, log-free um, concurrent uh, hash table. So if you populate, populate a lot of um, items into the hash table, the hash table can uh, go to very uh, big size, and the hash table uses uh, dummy nodes uh, for log-free um, me mechanism. Uh, so once you delete all the nodes, uh, live nodes, you uh, have the hash table uh, almost solely consisting of a lot of dummy nodes. And when you start to insert uh, the new portion of data into the uh, split ordered list, you face that you need to uh, handle a lot of dummy nodes and uh, this causes significant performance degradation. This is a subject for this MDF. And uh, also, this no uh, miracle, uh, Intel thread building box also do not have uh, erasing uh, log free. So once you need to erase some element from split order at least, you need to acquire a global log. You can only uh, insert and look up in the data structure uh, concurrently. Uh, let's have a look on um, Radix 3. Uh, we will take a, a deep a look on Radix 3 because our implementation is based on this uh, data structure. Uh, one of the example is uh, Judy arrays. We can say that uh, there are some uh, optimization of Radix 3 which provides very uh, clever and uh, several techniques uh, to compress Radix 3. So the Radix 3 is shown on the um, uh, picture. If you use uh, 
uh, Radix uh, keys, uh, then typically you have uh, nodes uh, in GDRS, you have uh, uh, 256 um, uh, items per each node. So, for example, if you have a 4 byte uh, key, you have a radix 3 of height 4, as on, on the picture. So, each byte of the key resolves a uh, particular level of the tree. Uh, this um, uh, data structure is nice because it's uh, uh, fixed height, so you have a constant access time. This is uh, pretty nice. Uh, basically, you need only bit operations and uh, point referencing to work with the data structure, so it's very easy to implement and very easy to make it log-free. Uh, however, the drawbacks of the data structure is that it's uh, memory greedy. So if you have a lot of um, keys and the keys are uniformly distributed among or, or the whole uh, key space, then you start to uh, lose a lot of memory for intermediary indexing nodes. So for example, each of the nodes, uh, which can address 256 uh, keys, uh, use it only for one branch to resolve only one key. So GDRA uh, uses uh, uh, compression uh, to avoid such uh, cases. Uh, also, there's um, research uh, which uh, helps to uh, compress um, uh, the try. In this um, in this uh, picture, uh, in the uh, art um, art data structure, uh, we take care about other type of um, compression, not only when a single node is used for, uh, for only one key, but also uh, when a, a sequence of index nodes is used to uh, build a single path to an item. Consider a unique uh, URL with a unique uh, character. So one, if you uh, have a different um, uh, different um, URLs uh, starting from uh, after block uh, slash, you have uh, different uh, characters in uh, URL, and if you resolve um, a character by each uh, node, you have a very long uh, traversal paths in the Radix 3. So art proposes to compress, uh, compress uh, the paths. Uh, another uh, technique uh, used in our case is busting try. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, consider wh what it is. So in a nutshell. Uh, Bussing try uh, starts from a basic uh, hash table. Uh, I will uh, show the, the picture and uh, code bit later, but now just a uh, basic description of what it is. So we have we start from a hash table, very small one, and we uh, keep uh, buckets and we click, uh, keep. Um, uh, fixed size collision chains, and once uh, our collision chain uh, grows to big, and we consider it as inefficient, and we have a different uh, different heuristics for inefficient, uh, we uh, burst the collision chain and insert additional uh, hash table. So we have now we have a two level uh, radix three and split the collision uh, chain into. Uh, several buckets, and we can repeat the process. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, discuss the performance issues and trade-offs of the uh, busing tree a bit later. Uh, at the moment, let's uh, um, say several words about x86-64 um, CPU caches and data model. Uh, in our case, we care about uh, cache conscious data structures, so the memory organization is very important for us. The first one is that um, uh, the architecture works with 64 uh, cache shrines. This is a, a data unit, so when you access, uh, for example, when you read uh, just an integer for main memory, you actually access 64 bytes. This um, a smallest unit uh, to operate with the memory. The second one is that uh, virtual memory works with uh, four kilobyte uh, pages and the addressed by uh, four kilobytes. Uh, also, we have a very limited um, cache uh, 
uh, caches. Uh, the first uh, cache uh, is uh, just uh, several kilobytes in size, and uh, since it's uh, organized uh, like a hash table with a sensitivity like a collision uh, chain, so depend, uh, depending on your uh, virtual addresses and physical addresses uh, which you uh, have uh, data placed, you might uh, have even uh, smaller uh, cache size. Uh, the second thing is that um, uh, we have a page table. Uh, in modern CPUs, we have a five level uh, page table, and in this picture, we have a four level page table. And uh, once you have a very large uh, data structure which doesn't fit uh, to TLB, which just can uh, contain about 1000 uh, pages, which is just uh, four megabytes of uh, data. So once you have a very large uh, address space and your uh, application uh, that structure uses a lot of memory, you actually start to miss uh, TLB. And this means that, uh, for example, in this picture, when you need to uh, resolve address of uh, a single green leaf in a binary tree, you need to traverse the whole uh, uh, page table. It means that you traverse the radix tree and you can access up to uh, four uh, different memory locations. So, in this sense, when you build a very large uh, data structure, it lives in uh, uh, in another uh, data structure. Uh, the second thing uh, is about memory ordering. Uh, x86-64 provides uh, very strong memory ordering. And this means that uh, we, we can think that almost no any reordering happen on this architecture, with only one exception, that uh, lots may be reordered with uh, earlier stores. So if we uh, do care about uh, moving um, uh, lots and stores, we, we should, should care about ordering in only one uh, case. We also tried um, hardware transaction memory into TSX for a long uh, time ago, and it provided good uh, performance for very small um, uh, work set, uh, and, but we didn't uh, use it for more sophisticated uh, data structure, structure like uh, trees, because uh, the uh, technology rolls back uh, to frequency and performance uh, degrades significantly. Uh, so, cache-conscious uh, data structure do care about uh, cache line uh, localities, so they do try to uh, reuse each, uh, to fully use uh, the cache line. And uh, when you fetch a cache line from the main memory, you try to uh, get as much uh, data from it as uh, possible. We uh, do care about uh, page locality in uh, TLB in the sense and uh, uh, and uh, reuse uh, cache lines. Uh, there are several uh, examples of cache conscious uh, data structures. Uh, unfortunately, they are not uh, log free, and this is the first uh, trade off. We can good uh, can can make a good. Uh, good use of uh, cache lines, but when we need to, to work on cards, we need to uh, trade off uh, efficiency in terms of uh, reuse of uh, cache lines uh, and uh, trade it for uh, larger concurrency. For example, we cannot use single instruction, multiple data, and uh, so on. Uh, had uh, tries uh, hash mapped uh, tries uh, for for this moment I just uh, reference uh, uh, research uh, about um, uh, cash conscious bussing try it's also not um, uh, log free and um, let's uh, move to uh, our uh, imp implementations uh, so um, in our case we 
uh, we work with uh, inside the cache line. So we start with H2 node, which is just an array of uh, integer uh, integers. So we have uh, 16 uh, integer offsets, and we can uh, with each offset we also uh, use one uh, bit, the most significant bit, uh, to. Uh, to uh, mark uh, particular uh, particular no uh, not as uh, the last in the uh, hash drive. So we have uh, essentially 31 uh, bits which provide us uh, 128 um, uh, gigabytes in RAM addressed with uh, 31 bit uh, offsets. Uh, so uh, with uh, for each index node we use uh, solely one uh, one uh, cache line. In this example, we have a string uh, foo. We co uh, compute a hash function and we receive some um, eight byte uh, value, and we get the uh, four four le least significant bits, which reference to nins uh, slots in the array. Uh, so with this uh, array, we have at the moment we have a hash table of only uh, sixteen uh, items and uh, referenced by the least significant four bits of the key. Uh, so we um, uh, allocate a, a collision a collision chain, and uh, we keep collision chains in uh, buckets. Uh, each bucket is a fixed uh, size of memory, and we have a, a collision map, which is just a, a bitmap, which we can operate in a log-free manner. It means that we uh, have atomic operations to set bit and uh, read bits uh, atomically. Uh, we also reuse one, one bit in x six sixty four. We have a bit operations which uh, require uh, is a um, chicken of um, uh, bitmap uh, before issuing instruction, uh, or uh, we we need to make sure that at least one bit is set. So in our case, since we uh, have a log free data structure, we just uh, keep one bit always set. So we have only 63 uh, bits uh, which we can operate for collision map. This is upper bound for collision map, but uh, actually we use much smaller uh, collision chain uh, fixed as uh, just uh, 16 uh, collisions. So uh, we start in a loop, the first thing we uh, discount uh, the uh, tree. In uh, in this case, we just uh, have a one a level tree. In this uh, retrieval of one uh, hash uh, ha hash table. Uh, next, we allocate the new uh, bucket, and we write the bucket uh, data to the new bucket. Uh, in this case, we write the data by offset uh, zero because we just created the new uh, bucket and no other uh, data uh, were inserted into the, the bucket. Uh, next, we have a fully ready um, block which is which can be uh, used by other threads. So now we uh, drew uh, atomic compare exchange and uh, replace in the hash table replace just one uh, one offset to this. Um, bucket. Uh, the upper limit for buckets is one uh, system page, uh, four kilobytes of data. Um, and um, if we find that uh, the hash table slot is already occupied by uh, some other thread, then we just um, delete the bucket and uh, retry uh, discounting. We need to uh, free uh, the bucket because uh, if uh, somebody already inserted some data into just uh, empty hash table, it means that probably we already have uh, empty bucket and we can uh, insert the data as a collision to already ready uh, bucket. So we uh, free the current uh, bucket and retry uh, the loop. Uh, next, uh, if we, uh, since we uh, have a bucket as um, 
fixed uh, size as limited by one uh, system page, it, it only fits uh, to very small uh, data stored in place. The other thing is that we have a boxing tree. It means that uh, the buckets uh, can be reorganized and the data can be moved from one bucket to another. And uh, there are two cases. The first one is when we need to uh, keep uh, large uh, data like uh, web pages and the second one is when we need to uh, keep point uh, uh, stability for small records so we need to guarantee that uh, once uh, once a uh, client code references that data stored in the tree uh, the pointer is never changed uh, so in this case we insert into the uh, bucket only metadata data descriptor which stores uh, offset uh, to system pages storing the large data or small data. We also use uh, allocator which is aware about small data allocations like uh, slab caches or large uh, data allocations. So in this sense we do basically the same thing. We just create uh, the record as a metadata uh, metadata descriptor uh, describing the length and we drew exactly as uh, in previous slide uh, uh, um, we firstly uh, build the uh, bucket we build the large uh, da data record we reference the bucket to the uh, large data and next we link uh, the index with the new bucket so now we have a uh, uh, busting uh, problem. Uh, so we have our bucket is uh, full, so we already inserted uh, three items and we try to insert the fourth item zoo and uh, the bucket is full. We need to bust uh, the bucket and uh, spread the data among the different buckets. By the way, in this case we have um, bad case is that the next uh, four bits in all uh, four keys are equal to zero. It means that we, uh, when we create a new index node and reference uh, the second four bit, they will um, point to the same uh, slot and we have a collision again. So uh, this is why we need uh, the uh, uh, top level while we loop, it means that we uh, constantly uh, insert uh, new uh, index nodes uh, until we uh, resolve the collision. Uh, so the first thing that we do all the insertion code as above, but when the bucket is uh, full, uh, we have a collision and the bucket is full, we uh, do uh, following things. Uh, first one, we uh, create the bucket, we uh, copy uh, first thing is that we uh, create a new bucket, we copy all um, we uh, copy all the data which must be uh, uh, copied by the second four bits uh, to the next uh, bucket and uh, we create a new index node and the first thing is that we uh, well, in this case, we need to, uh, to make uh, two atomic operations. The first one is to uh, link um, index, the current index node, with the new index node. And the second one is to um, uh, change the collision map, the bitmap of a Cupid uh, records in the bucket, to the new map because uh, we can have a concurrent uh, threads um, running uh, along the index tree uh, as well as um, threads uh, traversing inside the uh, bucket node. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, trade-off is that we can observe uh, double records in our tree. Uh, in this pseudocode, we firstly uh, prepare uh, buckets, we prepare the index node, we do the cast, so we publish the new index node with the copied uh, bucket, and the uh, new bucket and old bucket uh, refer may reference uh, the same records. And after that, we, uh, we update the 
bitmap of acute records in the old bucket. At this time, uh, concurrent uh, bursting uh, may happen, and uh, this means that uh, some other thread may um, uh, may take uh, out some records and insert the new records. So the bitmap of the current bucket may change. So we need to do um, compare exchange atomic. Uh, however, uh, this uh, compare exchange we need to read uh, the currently uh, current value of the bitmap as a current map. And once we read the map, we um, com compute the uh, new records which we didn't uh, copy yet from, from this bucket. And we uh, redo copying to the new uh, bucket and we repeat the process. When we observe the same uh, bitmap in current uh, buckets, then we can uh, stop the operation and break the inner loop. That was um, uh, pseudocode, and this um, also pseudocode, but with uh, more details. So in this case, we uh, move uh, move it uh, rec uh, records. Um, in this example, we we have a different uh, success uh, case, and we have a different uh, second level uh, four bits, and we have only one index node, and we move it all the records with. Uh, second uh, four bits uh, to a new bucket. And at this uh, moment, uh, concurrent threads may observe uh, the uh, record uh, uh, with um, uh, se second uh, four bits as uh, four in two different buckets. Uh, this is our trade-off for current algorithms, and we make sure that uh, deletions uh, never uh, create the bitmaps. Uh, so, uh, after uh, several retries of uh, copying records, we inside the move uh, moving records, we take care about uh, bitmaps in um, atomic atomic way. Uh, we uh, after several tries, we uh, we see no uh, no double records in a new bucket. Uh, reclaiming data uh, is uh, tricky, as I mentioned before. We never uh, clear the index nodes directly. Uh, so what we do on uh, freeing uh, some data in the data structure is that we uh, copy the bucket uh, and we uh, set a new uh, link from the uh, index node. So at some point we have... Uh, uh, two buckets with uh, one with uh, uh, removed data and another without the removed data, and uh, some uh, threads may uh, still uh, still be observing the old bucket. So we introduce uh, uh, generations, uh, and uh, generations work in the following way: every observer, uh, in this case uh, memory re readers, uh, in this case inserters or um, finders, so insert and recap operations are both considered as readers, uh, they just uh, read the global uh, generation and uh, store it uh, in thread local uh, variable. When, uh, when, uh, when an inserter or uh, finder uh, finishes with uh, uh, data structure, it uh, announces that the uh, local generation is uh, infinite. So it, it means that we do not care about any generation inside the uh, data structure. Uh, removers uh, firstly um, uh, do the uh, data copying and uh, populating uh, uh, the new index um, index reference to the index node, and uh, after that we need to wait, uh, we need to scan all the threads, uh, what, what the last generation they did observe. And we need to make sure that either all the, uh, uh, all the threads observed later gener generations, or they do not care about uh, data structure generation at all. So in this, um, in this case, in uh, deleters, uh, we have um, 
long loop over all the uh, thread local uh, variables, and we wait uh, when, when all the readers uh, finish with their uh, data they observe. Uh, so uh, this uh, about uh, metadata. I actually um, uh, well, uh, actually uh, this um, this one of uh, trade off um, made in the data structures. We uh, use it uh, metadata. Metadata is um, one more and in, in direction. Uh, level which uh, introduces additional memory access. Uh, so it's not uh, good in perspective from uh, being cache conscious and being constant time. Uh, however, uh, this uh, is the only way to um, uh, get the point of uh, st stability and uh, handle a large uh, data structure out of index uh, nodes. And also, uh, this allows us to keep uh, collision chains and uh, buckets as a fixed size array, which simplifies us um, uh, log free operations operating with uh, uh, bit masks and uh, simple arrays. Uh, next, uh, you might think when we consider the um, first level of the data structure, for example, let's say that we start our work and we have uh, thousands of clients requesting our data structure and uh, our data structure is, is empty. And what we have? We have uh, hash tables with only 16 um, slots and uh, surely we have a lot of uh, collisions, for example, uh, from competing 100 threads and this is a good chance that uh, a lot of threads will be bursting the same nodes and so on. That's not a good case. So in this case, we uh, what we do is that we have a constructor for data structure and you can specify the size of the root entry. And the root entry makes sense to make quite big, uh, like to resolve uh, 8 bits, 12 bits, 16 bits, whatever is a multiplication of 4 bits. The second thing uh, also trade off is that in um, this case I used a uh, hash function to get the key for uh, hash try. Uh, however, we can use the uh, uh, plain string as the uh, as keys for hash try. But in this case we, uh, case, we can preserve the order so we can uh, make a range uh, queries for the data structure. Uh, but we get the data structure of uh, unlimited height. And uh, to limit the height, uh, data compressions like uh, hope data structure helps us to reduce the key. So in uh, current version, we uh, develop um, key compression before going to the uh, H-try to make it more compact. The second thing is that I mentioned that um, due to uh, offset, using offsets instead of row pointers, uh, each H-try can address only 128 uh, gigabytes of RAM. This is not so, maybe not, not efficient, uh, sufficient for modern uh, data sets. In uh, this case, we built a um, for, uh, forest like a uh, set of uh, hash try and we share the data among the shards. The good thing is that uh, each try uh, can be uh, numa not uh, local. So once we have a thread, uh, uh, threads working on a particular numa node, uh, working with a particular shard of data, we can distribute ingress requests among the uh, numa nodes, uh, different sets of uh, threads working with the different uh, shards of data. This is quite helpful in uh, Numa uh, nodes. So that's all what I had today. Uh, the proof of concept uh, at the moment a bit unstable uh, can be found in um, our blog uh, repository on GitHub. Uh, the previous version of h using read-write work for bucket can be found in um, Tempesta source code. Uh, so that's all. So please um, post your questions. Uh, I have um, one question so far. Uh, this uh, attentive uh, 
did you implement and generate a basic standard C++ container? That why algorithms like CD stored, ranged for loop, it is just work. What is this custom data structure? Um, <laughs> frankly speaking, uh, this is, um, no, we, we didn't uh, do... Um, uh, C++ wrappers. Uh, at the moment, this is um, we we mostly develop the data structure to be embedded into uh, the Linux kernel. So this is solely Linux kernel atomics, very which is very specific and so on. But we debug and uh, we benchmark the data structure in user space, and we have a C++ wrappers for the data structure. So in short, the data structures is, structure is written in uh, plain C, but we use it for uh, C++ testing and benchmarking code.